Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the upgrade to Yosemite. Uh, Apple in their announcement today has announced the upgrade to Yosemite. So I thought I would walk you through how to upgrade your uh, Mac so that you have all of the new Yosemite features and all of that on it. Now before we get started, uh, there's a few things to take a look at. As you can see, this is uh, Apple's website. And this is where you can actually click the button to upgrade now. We're going to do that in a minute, but there's just a couple of things that you want to do before you uh, actually do the upgrade to make sure you're ready. Uh, the first thing is I went over here to uh, Wikipedia uh, for Yosemite, and these are all of the different uh, Macs that are compatible with Yosemite. So you're going to want to make sure that your Mac is compatible uh, to do the upgrade. Now, in order to know that, just to figure out which one it is or where your Mac's at, if you come up to the Apple up here and you just go about this Mac, uh, you're going to be able to see right in here uh, the type of uh, Mac that you've got, and you'll be able to see where it's at and whether it qualifies or not. Uh, you can also go in here for more information if you want, and it'll bring up a screen uh, that'll give you more specifics about your particular Mac so that you know whether or not it's eligible to have this upgrade happen. Uh, so if you're not getting the download, you're wondering why that's not working, if you just come in here, you'll be able to uh, tell and have a good idea whether you should do the upgrade or not. So let me just put that down. Uh, the other thing to understand is you want to have at least 2 gigs of RAM uh, and 8 gigabytes of storage in order to use it. Uh, I would say 2 gigs is really on the low side. You probably want to bump that to at least 4 or 8 uh, to get to have it run real smooth. But uh, those are the minimum requirements so that you know what's there. Now the other thing you're going to want to do is check to uh, see if there are any applications that are critical to you uh, that are running on, uh, on your computer that may not be Yosemite compatible yet. And so in order to do that, uh, there's this website called RoaringApps.com. And when you come in here, you see it's got this Yosemite compatibility table. And if you just click on that, uh, you'll see that it'll load up a table uh, that will show you the various apps uh, that you might have and then whether or not they're uh, eligible for Yosemite or not. So here you go. You can see we've got a Yosemite column here, and you can see the various apps down the side. And so you can do a search. You can filter these out and try to find uh, you know, your apps. But whatever critical apps you've got, you can come in here and check to make sure they work. Like, for instance, 1Password uh, shows it does work with Yosemite. And so you can do that. If that's a critical app for you, then you know that's okay. And so I would do that for some of your applications just to make sure so that uh, you know you're ready for this upgrade. Uh, let me just put this down for a second. Um, another thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that your backups are working. Now, one thing you can do is check your Time Machine backups just to make sure you have that. And so if I just open Time Machine Preferences here, it'll bring up the Preferences window for me and tell me when was the last time I backed up and making sure that I've got that current backup if you're using Time Machine. Uh, one more thing that I like to do is I like to have a clone uh, of my drive. And so I use an application called Super Duper. Let me pull that up here. And so this is Super Duper, and let me just center that for a minute. Super Duper, basically what it does is it makes a clone of your main hard drive. So that that way, if something goes wrong with the install, you can always go back and just basically take that clone and copy it back onto your main drive, and you're back in business. Everything's fine and ready to go. And so, uh, so you might want to do that, go through that process of making a clone. Uh, it's very easy to do uh, in Super Duper. You just take the drive that you want to copy, the drive you want to copy it to, Back up all files, click copy now, and it'll go through the process of making that clone for you so that things get all set up and ready to go. So once you've got all of your, uh, all of your stuff backed up, everything's ready to go, uh, then you're ready to do, do the update. And so what we'll do now is let me just pull up uh, the web here, and let's go right back here to the Yosemite page. Uh, you can click this Upgrade Now button if you want to, which will take you into uh, the App Store, the Mac App Store, or you can go to the Mac App Store itself. So let me go over to the Mac App Store and show you how to do the upgrade. Okay, here we are over on the Mac App Store, and here's the Yosemite uh, page here, and it just kind of shows you a uh, little bit of the information on what Yosemite is. And like I said, Apple just put this out today. Uh, a couple of things to recognize. Uh, it does take 5.16 gigabytes for the download, uh, so you want to know that uh, ahead of time. Uh, just to make sure you know that uh, not not only the space, but also how much time it will take to download. And it could take a while, uh, depending on when you're doing this. Uh, as you can see, I've already done the download. Uh, so I've already got the download here. And so what I'm going to do is let me just put this down and show you. Uh, what happens is when you download it, if I just pull up uh, applications here in the Finder, uh, you'll get this Install uh, Yosemite right here. And one of the things you might want to do uh, before you install it is if you just uh, click on this, in fact, just control click on it and say show package contents. 
And this is one of the things that I do from time to time just so that I have uh, an installer handy. If you go into the contents here and you just go to shared support, you'll see this install uh, DMG uh, file. And so what you can do is just uh, copy that and then move it uh, to another location where you can save it. So what I'm going to do here is just go ahead and uh, copy that. So I copied it and then I'll just go into my documents here for a minute and uh, just come inside here. Let's say uh, on computer and let's come in here and then I'm going to paste the item in here. And you can see now it's pasting the install uh, ES, uh, ESD there. And so it's going to move it for me and copy it. Uh, and once it's done copying that, um, I'm going to let it do its thing. When it's done, I'll come back and show you what to do with that once it's copied. Okay, now that that uh, file has been loaded in here, has been copied, uh, I usually like to come in here and just rename it. So we'll put Yosemite in front of that. And that way I just know it's the Yosemite uh, install image. So that, that way I've got that there in case I ever need it later if I want to create a uh, bootable startup or anything like that. I've at least got the DMG there so I can install from this. So that's just a little thing you might want to do just so you've got it there so you don't have to download it from the Mac App Store again or keep track of it that way. It's just an easy way to, uh, to set it up. So then when that's done, you go back into Applications, and you can double-click on this Install Yosemite. Uh, if you've downloaded it, it's probably come up on its own, and uh, that's happened uh, for, for me as well. So let me just do this. Let me pop this down here and go to the Install window. And there we go. This is the install window for Yosemite. And so it's saying, hey, to set it up, uh, click Continue. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then what I'll have to do is eventually my screen, uh, my screen capture software will go offline because it'll start installing it. And then we'll go to a camera to show you what the screen looks like. So let's just click Continue. And so we got to agree to the licensing agreement. We say Agree. I say Agree again. And then it asks me where I want to install it. And so you can basically select the disk you want it on. And obviously you want it on your main uh, boot drive. That's where you want to install it. Uh, so for me, that's where this is, is on this uh, server install hard drive. So I'm going to click on install. And it's going to ask me to authenticate. Say OK. And then it's going to start this process of downloading the components it needs uh, to go ahead and uh, make this happen. So it's got about a minute remaining. So what I'm going to do is let it finish its download. It's going to do its restart automatically. So I'm going to shut down my screencast software so we can come back on the other side. So now it's restarted and now it's starting to do its update process. You can see the progress bar there where it's downloading the information. Uh, looks very similar to what we normally see on our iPhones or on our iPads. And so it's going to go through this process here. And once it's done with that bar, I'll come back and show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay. So now we're on the install OS 10 screen and it's going to come into an end there and now it's starting to install uh, the actual operating system now, all the upgrades that need to happen onto my server hard drive. And you can see there it's giving an estimate of about uh, 18 minutes to run through the entire process. Uh, again, it is an upgrade. This is not a clean install. So it's going through just upgrading all the components that I need. And as you can see where there's a bar down there at the bottom, it'll start uh, sliding across as it starts updating things and uh, eventually it'll get to the end of that process and, uh, and continue that to continue to upgrade. So what I'm going to do again is I will let it run just like we did before. And once it gets uh, close to the end there, I'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's finished uh, installing everything it needs to do the upgrade. Okay, so here we are at the end. It uh, basically took a little bit longer than it said it would. So it said it'd take 18 minutes. It took about 15. So now it's going to restart and load it up and we'll see what it looks like when it comes back on the other side. Okay, so as you can see, we're starting to load again. We're back on this screen where it looks like it's loading a second time. Uh, again, the screen that looks kind of like what we see on iPads and on our iPhones. So I'm going to let this thing load up. And again, when it comes to the end, I'll show you what it looks like once it finishes. And then we should be uh, booting into the system here. Okay, so now we've booted back into the install screen. And as you can see on here, we're going through this uh, second process with this now. And it says it's got about seven minutes remaining. And the bar seems to be moving pretty fast. So I'm going to, again, just like before, we'll continue to let this roll. And then I'll come back and show you as we get down towards the end what it looks like once this part finishes installing. Okay, so here we are on the other side of the update. Uh, it took roughly about 45 minutes uh, to get to this spot that we're at right now. 
and so that gives you an idea on a gauge of time so it's, it's pretty close uh, to what it says when it says time but it's it's kind of off uh, when you get down to that uh, just about a minute zone uh, it can either take a little bit longer or kind of scoots by real fast so uh, just know that in terms of your own timing as you're getting it set up so let me just go ahead and log in here hit enter and now we start with the uh, the screen where we need to log in with our Apple ID so I'll go ahead and put the password in for that and we'll click continue so now it gives me the terms and conditions I'm gonna agree to those agree again and now it asks us if I want to set up iCloud uh, keychain uh, I'm going to uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and set that up later say continue and then it's asking if I want to use file vault uh, disk encryption so Apple's put a uh, emphasis on security uh, in this uh, particular update and so that's why it's asking me that uh, that if I want to uh, I'm not going to do that right now I'll do that another time uh, if I want to set that up alright so it's letting me know uh, what software is incompatible uh, with this version of OS 10 so I've got a particular software that's not there so you may have a number of uh, different things in here that are incompatible if you didn't get a chance to check those ahead of time or you missed it you'll be able to see what those are on here so I'm just gonna say continue and now it's set, uh, finishing setting up my Mac. And it's put me back into the screen with all this different information that's popped up. So let me go through and uh, go ahead and clean this up and I'll turn back over to uh, my screencast software and we'll wrap this up. Okay, here I am back on my screencast software, and here I am on the Yosemite desktop. Now, one of the things that I noticed on an upgrade is if you've set your desktop uh, wallpaper the way you want it, uh, Yosemite does not touch that. It leaves it alone. So I went in and put the uh, Yosemite wallpaper back up there uh, to show you what it looks like uh, when you install it uh, if you haven't done anything custom-wise with your wallpaper. Uh, one of the things you get is you'll get every once in a while a few things that will pop up uh, because uh, either you have some incompatible software or software that needs to be updated because some of your software may not have gotten updated ahead of time. Uh, here it's asking for my iCloud password, so I'm going to put that in again. And just hit log in. So it's going to log me into iCloud. Uh, now, pretty much uh, the desktop looks the same uh, with everything that you've got laid out on it, with the exception of a few things. Uh, you've got uh, just a different font across the top, uh, like we've talked about, and some of the windows look different. If I go down to the dock, you see I've got this uh, flat dock now, uh, as opposed to the one that was uh, three-dimensional. And so that, uh, that's got that all set up that way for us. So it looks just a little bit different. Uh, if you go into System Preferences, just for a real quick tour, you can again get a feel for how uh, the windows look different, so do the icons uh, that are on those windows. Uh, some of them are obviously the Apple ones, you can see some that aren't, they're just not quite updated yet. Uh, but it gives you an idea of, of the look and feel of the uh, of the whole interface, which is definitely very different. So one more thing you're going to want to check. Let me just uh, go up here, let's just uh, put System Preferences down, is you're going to want to check your uh, the App Store because you will have uh, a number of updates that will be available. You can see over here I've got eight updates, and I'm, I'm assuming those will continue to sort of roll in. As you can see here, there's a new iTunes update on there, and then uh, also all of the different Apple applications like Keynote Pages, Numbers, you can see Server there, uh, Aperture. You can see all these different applications have updates to them uh, to, in order to work with Yosemite. So you'll want to go through the process of updating all of these as well uh, as you get everything set up. So hopefully that gets you started with uh, Yosemite, gave you a good idea of what the upgrade process looks like. And uh, I'll come back later uh, to help you see how to update uh, server and a few of the other things that are on there as well. And probably we'll do one on a clean install as well. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.